the funk of a break. Well, funky drummer. Yeah, James Brown. James Brown. Mm. That drum pattern, mm. bruv, it's, it's just. Mm. Mm. And so the floor to the floor, after a while, we was a bit like that boom, boom, that constant. We was a bit like, you know what? Is it ever gonna... There was yeah. the, the, the snare, the breaks with the streets. Mm. Do you mm. know what I'm saying? Mm. Street kids mm. loved the breaks. Mm. So when we incorporated breaks and started mixing techno with breaks, that's what we were trying to do. Mm. We were trying to get that hip hop breaks because there's something about breaks. It broke up the groove. Mm. It wasn't this constant thing. Mm. It tracks move because it's like a real drummer playing. Instead of that boom, boom, which is disco. Yeah. It's the four to the floor, monotony. And where the breaks was kind of like... You invented that shit. Yeah. You, dude, you put the breaks in with the house. Yeah. And, you were, and you're like, yeah, it sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds good. Killer <laughs> official Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Khaled. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Khaled podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beautiful, man. Yeah. We're here. We're here. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Khaled podcast live and direct central London. For as central as you need to be, choose to be. Your desires are to be here, so we thank you. Sharing is caring and spreading the word, the gospel on the street culture and all the sports in, interacted within it. Get yourselves ready for the upcoming Hoddle Wars. It's time to graph punks up and get up with some NFT gaming. Also, big shout out to Chief Rocker Gear. From streets to stage, Chief Rocker is the streetwear of champions. <clears throat> but, uh, if you want more of that, you've got the Television app free download iPhone, Android for all your street culture, sports with his big docs, mini docs, DJ mixes, all the not notorious podcasts that you're in front of right now. <laughs> Cameras on, and my goodness, this is no longer my house. The house is now owned, it's re owned. If anyone was going to come through this building right now, he immediately gets rights to the property. <laughs> this guy is too much for my little head exploding internally. Um, a veteran, a legend, a pioneer, a king, a king. Binged and purged this world, this landscape we call dance music very early on, alongside his uh, his uh, <laughs> his dynamic partner, the yeah. Groove Rider. <laughs> we have drum and basses, original. The buck stops right here. Fabio inside it's the place. Same, bro. It's been a while, man. It's been a long time coming. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm. Uh, I've got to be honest with you, bro. I've never been better. Oh yeah, you're in a really good place, aren't you? Bro? Yeah, yeah. Things Talk are good at the moment. I just think, you know, uh, at my age, bro, mm. Mm. to be going this long and still doing it, still busy, mm. it's... I, do you know what? I think I've got to a stage now where I think I'm kind of just recognising what me and Groove have done. Mm. For the first time, really. Ooh, yeah. For the first time. Is that is that wisdom coming from a point of view of you're able to look back now on reflection? I think, you know what, it's a couple of things. I think one is we're doing a lot of things that are involved with our legacy. Mm. So the orchestra, do you know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, I've got this... Oh, my God, that looked the, the orchestra is a madness, man. <gasps> and then we've got... I've got this compilation coming out. And then we've done Rage as well. That must have been a mind-bender mind going back Bruv, into that. Bro, it was that. crazy. It was crazy doing that. So now it feels like, with all these things looking back in retrospect, it's kind of like, raw, like, that's mad we've done all these things. <laughs> because you know, firstly, like time goes so quickly. It does. So you don't even have time to digest anything. Because no. you're literally, when you live like six months ahead, mm. Yeah. You know, you get your schedule six months. Before you know it, that's come and gone, bro. Well, let's stick with that for a second. Yeah. Because there's only a few people um, that have sat on this seat here that could I, I could quite honestly say, um, as as an act, as a human being, you've gone through so many transitions yeah. that, that has led to this point here for all of us to eat. Yeah. Full stop. Let's just call it how it is. <laughs> in, uh, in the genre we're talking about, respectfully, jungle, which you transcend earlier than that. Yeah. Uh, you must have just... It must be the wildest roller coaster. To be Fabio, it, it must be a fucking... <laughs> every day, it's just it like, really what, what are we doing? What are we yeah. doing? What, yeah. am I, what am I? Yeah. What's going <laughs> Where on am I? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it, like, it is, you know, it's like beating me up every single fucking day. Every day. Every you day. land somewhere else. What is it today? It, every day, there's a new project going on. There's, we've got so many 
we're dipping our toes into so many things at the moment. Yeah. Which you have to do now. Yeah. Keller. Yeah. I don't think it's necessarily by choice. I think it's by the fact you have to do that now. We live it, especially post pandemic. I think the rat race has got even tougher. I think because there's so much other things you have to do mm. to stay at the top. Mm. Before you had to be good. You yeah. had to be good, you had to go out there, you, you ply your trade. And for years and years and years, me and Groove, that's what we did. Yeah. We had an agent doing shit for us, management at times, but it was always just us going out there, doing our thing. Superstar mm. DJ. Yeah. The faceless, <laughs> you guys were a face. And it must have been really hard to kind of detach yourself from this, this, because <clears throat> there, there wasn't always this, was there? No. No, of course they weren't. I mean, you know, that's what people really forget sometimes. They think you just landed mm. and everything was just bam. Mm. And it weren't like that. The early days, as you know, especially coming from our time, mm. there was a struggle, bruv. Mm. Mm. And there was times where you doubted yourself and there was times where you weren't sure if you'd done the right thing because we're self-employed. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're seeing your friends out there, they got their day jobs, they're doing nice. Yeah. Driving big cars and that. And then yeah. you're you're out there getting 30, 40 pounds and and you're out there struggling, bro. And mm. you sit down at, there was times where I sat down and thought, Fuck I this. might have to get a day job, yeah. bruv. Especially, I'm sure we'll touch on this uh, uh, other times, when the Acid House thing was over. When mm. Acid House came to an end, I remember Groove looking at me, he was thinking, bro. Like we might have to get a job, we might have to get a day job. And Groove, Groove was a Groove was into kind of computers yeah. when I met him. So he was right. into code from from late eighties, fam. Do you know what I'm saying? That is oh, deep. That deep. is deep. My man was doing code when I met him, and he used to work at a hospital doing code for their computer systems. Wow, that's what Groove was doing in the late eighties. Yo, that is no that is, joke. That is no joke. That's some intelligence Bruh, right there. You got to remember, that was all numbers and squiggles, like algebra. <laughs> that was like... <laughs> yeah, that was like... I some... see that and I just go kind of blank. And that's what my guy was doing. And I was kind of just kicking around. So music saved me, man. But when Acid House finished and the criminal justice bill came in and we were told... Pack your bags. Pack your bags. Yeah. A little bit like when Richie Sunak said... Get another trade. It yeah. was it was like a moment where you sat down to yourself and thought, boy, it's over. And then you know what? It just transitioned into nightclubs yeah. and things just carried on. But we never saw that. We just oh. thought the rave, the legal raves, that was the way to go. And we didn't think yeah. beyond that. That's a scary prospect, isn't it? And One that we've all suffered with, but but that, that dare. Yeah. But we were young, so it was slightly different aesthetic from now because we did have options. Mm. But can I be in a black guy growing up in Brixton? Those options were very limited. Right, let's let's stay there for a second. Yeah. So, so we're talking pre um, criminal justice bill. Mm. We're talking pre uh, legendary status. We're talking. We're in we're in South right now. Yeah, we're on we're on we're in we're coming to grounds. Yeah. We're we are. Terra firma. Yes. So what was life like for you at that point? Fact? Growing up in Brixton. That's right. Yeah. Well, growing up in Brixton was a blessed thing on many levels because I had a happy childhood. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, happy in the way that I had, I was running with the man's then. <laughs> and we were out there and just being young. <laughs> and when I say happy, the things were different also mm. because down the road you had Stratham mm -hmm. and Stratham was where the National Front was based. <laughs> well, polar opposite. Well, wow. And it was another world and you could walk Stratham in 10, 15 minutes. So that was a scary thing and then finding a job was scary and then as a young man figuring out how you want to live. You want to be on the road with a man's Mm. And, and and be hustling because mm. that's a choice you've got to make mm -hmm. and it's a choice it's not a choice that I sat down and thought right one day boy am I going to hustle or am I going to get a job mm -hmm. I was just right in the middle because also um, growing up with parents that had a lot of faith in me to be honest with you I screwed up at school 
killer. Right, right. I was very bright at school, very, very bright. And and, and I kind of messed up because I was rolling with, with, with the local crew and they were kind of like, if you if you was studying, you was a bookworm. Did you, you kind of did you suppress your your intellect to level up to that kind of uh, that kind of no? Clientele? Because I just stayed on the ground, so I used to just roll with the man's and act like yeah, I'm with you guys. Right, right. Did so, that was that a protective kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, it was because yeah. at the end of the day, it was peer pressure to yeah, a degree. Yeah, yeah, of course. So you know, we I took I was in between being a roadman and being into music heavily. Mm. When I say I'm into music, I, I grew up on all kinds of black music, funk, soul, mm. reggae. Rare groove. Rare groove, <sighs> dub. Oh. dub. Dub dub was a big thing for me. Mm. Sound systems, mm. going listening to Joshaka, God bless his soul. Mm. Um, Rest in peace, and listen to that guy, king, that guy, that guy. I, don't, I, don't, I can't him. even start with that guy. I get goosebumps on the leg up when I hear the fucking Yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. You even hear his name, peace. that name, yeah. bruv. Just shuckle, oh. you know. That name alone, that's no, what attracted just, yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that name is cold. Cold as ice. Bruv. And then when I went to see him and the way he was in it, he was like a Bob Marley. Because a guy was just closed his eyes and he was just... And I was just thinking, oh, this guy's in this thing mm. deep. So he really inspired me. And then I was into funk and soul because my cousin, Elaine... Um, I've got to give her some props. Big up, Elaine. Listen, yeah. any family member that introduces people, yeah. anybody that introduces people to music, yeah. salute. Yeah. And she she used to be a funk girl. And she, when I used to go and see her, she used to have like, Roy Ayers, Bob James, Grover Washington. And that was just like, it blew my mind, bruv. What bit blew your mind on that more, more, more uh, directly? Was it the fact that this, this, cat, this, uh, this door opening of just amazing music? Or was it the fact that... Your cousin had that. That's crazy. Mm. What, which one was it? It was both. Was it? Yeah. It was both. She opened my mind to funk. And you got to remember, funk in them days, if you think like every single week, there was just so many tunes. <laughs> just this, just every week she used to, I used to go around her house and she used to always buy, they used to call them pre-release mm -hmm. imports from America. And she used to have stacks of albums. And yeah. she used to just sit down and go, listen to this. And I used to be like, her taste was exactly the same as mine. And I was, I was blown. But I was torn also because I was into reggae. And the reggae and dub thing and funk thing was like mods and rockers. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They weren't, if you was into reggae, they saw, if you was into soul music, they saw you as a little bit of a, do you know what I'm saying? Really? Yeah, at, like we can't. Do you know what I'm really? saying? Because reggae was all about the struggle. Yeah. Funk was all mo was about dancing. Pro protest. It was protest. Yeah, it was protest. When funk was more melty. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. <laughs> Romantic, slushy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Talking yeah. about either dancing uh, or being in love. It's like being into rap when you're into New Jack Swing, I guess. It's yeah, exactly. Of... It's the same kind of thing. So mm. that aesthetic was that you had to be into one or the other. Mm. And I was into both. Mm. So... Both sides never met because on Saturday I was going to funk clubs with my, my with my cousin. Mm. Then on Monday, back to school, college, I was listening to Black Uhuru, do you know what I mean? And, <laughs> yeah. and you know what I'm saying? And Mighty Diamonds and Burning Spear. So but then that was the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. It was the best of both worlds. I wouldn't have it any other way because I was so open minded. Mm. And everyone else was so closed. Mm. I was nice, bruv. But how was how was how did the road interpret that? Because with with uh, with music, there's there's some of the most dangerous music, in my opinion. It starts yeah. it's it starts from the street, yeah. and it, it goes into like well, you know, what are the narcotics? What's yeah. the drug of choice? What's yeah. the alcohol of choice? What's yeah. the what's the you what's know? The, there's a uniform in it. There is a uniform, isn't there? Yeah, there's a uniform. Yeah. So that's another mad thing because then. On the reggae side, I was wearing Farrah slacks. I was wearing crocodile skin shoes. I was wearing Burberry Max. Come on. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, dude. And then on the other side, the soul side was skinny jeans, yeah. king slippers, yeah. Harley Quinn shirt. It's like two wardrobes. Skinny tie. So it was, I had two wardrobes and I was, I, I was broke. <laughs> so And you every, were on road as well? I was on road. So every penny <laughs> went on clothes. Wow. You know what I mean? That was a real big thing for me, yeah. like that, the uniforms. Yeah. But it was great because, as I said, I was living two lives, yeah. man, and I was just loving 
both sides. But then the soul guys were kind of like, oh, if you didn't reggae, man, they're trouble. Do you know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> trouble. We're here to dance and it's all peace and love. And then you go to a blues party, mm. he was watching someone get their throat cut. Do you know what I mean? Or man getting robbed in the dance. It was two completely different things. But I, the danger of that... Is what? Give me danger, little stranger. Love. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When I was with the man's demo, we were standing up on our little crew, standing up on the stairs, and no one could really pass us. Mm. I loved that. And then yeah. I loved the side where I was going out and dancing and, and getting into funk. Yeah. So it was mad. It just kind of... In the end, though, I kind of gravitated more towards funk. Mm. It became my thing. I, the road started to get a little bit... Because you've got to make a choice. When you're on the road that long, you've got to live by the street code. Yeah. And, and that's you, everything. It gets too deep. And it gets too deep. And I always was... My mum always used to say to me, don't bring police to my door. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do in the road, I don't want to see no police turn up. What was the, so, yeah, so your parents were, were very aware of what was going on. Not so much. But you knew... But they, they thought I was more of a soul boy. Because yeah. I was studious. Mm -hmm. But then when... When my exam <laughs> results came through. Studious. You see what a word that is alone. You've never yeah, read that yeah. in a podcast. <laughs> uh, uh, that in five no, There episodes. you go. That's it. Yeah. You know, but, you know, I was, I was that guy Fantastic. to them. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And then the other side of it, I didn't really let them see that. No. I didn't really let them see the fact that I was kind of like going out and going to blues dances. Yeah. I used to sneak out and go yeah. to blues dances. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was one of them ones. So I was living this mad double life. Yeah. But when I look back on it, it's Car it carved, 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 carved a path for me. Became you, 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 credentials. It's all credentials, isn't it? It's authenticity. It's a sign that you have walked it and the mm. people that surrounded you can verify it. Yeah. That, that's not just on road. That's your that's family. With that's with everything, That's isn't with it? everything you do. It's with everything you do. And, and the, the thing is what happened, I chose the path and I think the right way to go. Yeah. Because I went down the funk road and then funk, I, I got into hip hop. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Early, yeah. early days. I'm talking about, we used to listen to mixtapes mm. a lot. So there used to be a guy called Froggy okay. in the early 80s. First guy I ever heard mix. And my brethren, Colin Dale, you know, this my Colin guy. Colin Dale. My Colin Dale, that's my guy. There's a name. Seriously. Wow. Like, he, <laughs> he, I, he, I befriended him. I, he used to live around the corner from me. He was a soul boy. Mm. And then he used to make me, I listened to these mixtapes from Kiss FM in America. And this guy that used to do these mixes. And I was like, rah. Oh. And then, it's mad because the funk scene kind of embraced early hip, electro. Yeah. So yeah. then I heard Al Nyafish and Man Parish and um, right in Lagos. Bruv, right in Lagos. Google, I, go Google. This bruv. is important intel <laughs> right, right here. <laughs> right in Lagos. And they all came at the same time. Um, E.T. <laughs> and all do 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 And all those kind of tunes. <laughs> the Smurf by Tyron yeah, Brunson. Yeah, yeah, crazy. And, and, and I all, I'll never, ever forget, I went to a party. And the DJ played Rapper's Delight, Sugar Hill Gang, right? Nine minutes long, mm. that tune was. Mm. Can you imagine? With four rappers, mm. two and a half minutes mm. each, bruv. Mm. And the way they told that story, mm. I remember thinking, how did they do that? Mm. Mm. The invention of it, the mans mm. weren't singing. Mm. How are they getting away with it? How are they getting away yeah, with yeah. it? And the, the flow as well. It was kind of like so rhythmic. Nine minutes. Of Nine pure minutes. Bars. And it's bars. And everything, one man just went into the, segued into the next. Mm. And they all, mm. they told this story. Mm. And I, honestly, I was like, what is this? And then I heard Curtis blow the brakes. Crazy. Right? And then I, when I heard that, I thought, there's something going on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's something going this, on. This is replicable. And, and also, um, we've had a lot of, you know, a lot of Dons pass through here of that, that era. Yeah, I yeah. think there was a, a it, not a cheap to enter, but it said to people, we can do that. Yeah. It's yeah, almost yeah, like that art. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because it was, 
you're, you're, you're right, because it went from you have to be able to read music and you have to get an eight, nine-piece band with a brass section and mm. violins mm. to these guys ain't got no violins in their tunes. They, yeah. These tunes ain't even got no melodies. It's just yeah. rhythms. Yeah. They just ripped that. They just that. ripped that. Yeah. And it was all so cut and paste. That's when you started thinking, yeah. yeah. That was the first time, I think, people thought, I can do this. Yeah. The only other time was punk rock. Yeah. Because punk... The DIY of it. It was the DIY. They, the, the punk, what people don't understand, was the answer to disco. Because mm. they thought disco was overproduced. Mm. What were they actually singing about? Mm. It was all bullshit. Mm. We're going to make this raw... We can't play music. Mm -mm. We can't play like these session musicians. Mm. We can play a few notes. Yeah. But we're going to make it happen. Yeah. And that's punk. Restrictive... That's what I'm Move saying. Move with it. Go. And, break, the, well, break the mold. And it's just like with Sex Pistols. When I saw Sex Pistols, they went on a, a TV programme. I know which one it is. You know what I'm yeah, talking about. And they went on there, bro, yeah. and they <laughs> just went on with a madness. They started swearing, mm. mashing up the studio. He was like a big TV show. He was like the Terry Wogan of that time, and, and which became the Graham Norton yeah, of yeah, this time. Yeah, no, Absolutely. He got he got fired. He got for fired that. after that because they they said the c word yeah. on pro, this yeah. is in the seventies as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On yeah, prime yeah. time TV. Yeah, yeah. But then I looked at that and thought, these men are different. They just yeah. don't, they're just ripping up all the kind of books that yeah. you've read <laughs> on how to be a teenager and how to do this and that. Yeah. They're just wild. So all of this was happening, and then hip hop came along. And I just resonated with it, bruv. Mm. Uh, and the early days of hip hop, man, I was in it mm. hard. Fast forward a little bit. We, uh, we were reminiscing of uh, the Knowledge Awards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, when me and my brother Trip, big up Trip, he's out there. Yeah. Um, well, you know, you're watching. Um, and uh, you, were you, were, you were hosting. You yeah, were hosting. It, it was That's the Knowledge right. Drum and Bass Awards. Yeah. And. Uh, I didn't realise for my age and time because I, I really was a, 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 an import of hip hop into this drum and bass arena. And uh, honestly, I thought for, for a second, I was like, oh, this, this ain't going to fly, man. Yeah. This is like beatboxing, yeah, yeah. this drum and bass <laughs> yeah. thing. I don't even know I was booked. I don't know how I was yeah. booked. How know, did, was that I S that I hooked that up? SS. SS, SS hooked it up initially with the drum and bass thing, getting me in. But n no not one, that particular yeah, thing. Not that particular thing. Yeah. And I don't. I, I didn't even know how I got to that place. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, let's see what happens then. Love. And it Bruv. Blue. Bruv. Bruv. And I didn't realise at that time how many of you guys were so ingrained in the hip hop yeah, thing. thing. Yep. Like, I think yeah. it was almost like, it was, for me, beatbox, it was like a beatbox home, not me, but beatboxing coming into the fold. Yeah. It was so embraced. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Because that night, I remember it was all going well. It was all going well. Everything was very calm. Everyone's sitting down. And then they said, yeah, we got this guy. I, I, got a bit of paper said who's on next he said this guy called Killer Keller he's going to do a little beatbox mm. and I even thought how is this going to work <laughs> you know what I'm saying and you came on and bro honestly in the whole time I've been doing this thing very rare do you see someone just come out the blue and just absolutely <laughs> land like that you absolutely murdered it and from the get go from the get go from you started and I could see Mm. It was like one of them things that after a couple of minutes you got it and mm. you thought, you know what? I'm okay, you don't get this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going in. There was the fear, bruv. Like, I saw gold. I mean, there was Dizzy Rascal, there was Gold, yeah, there was Foxy, yeah, yeah. Nicky Black Market. Yeah. I've seen everyone. And I'd just met you and I was like, all oh, right, I'm already, yeah. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm some other planet right now. This blew my mind. My fucking hero. Yeah. <laughs> right? And I'm like, okay, so now we're going to just go in front of all, all of them. Every, every single person, yeah. like, every tape pack I've had. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, it was crazy. And uh, Goldie coming up, knocking the tables. It was all. Everyone went mad. Everyone went mad. And I hip -hop, honestly. Though, hip hop is so part and parcel of the drum and bass thing. And the jungle, the. The breaks that and how it all hundred percent, hundred percent, and I always tell people we were into house, mm. right? Like eighty eight, but what was missing for us was the breaks mm. because there was something about breaks, the funk, the funk of a break. Well, 
funky drummer. Yeah, James Brown. James Brown. Mm. That drum pattern, mm. bruv, it's, it's just... Mm. Mm. And so the floor to the floor, after a while, we was a bit like that boom, boom, that constant. We was a bit like, you know what? Is it ever gonna... There was yeah. the, the, the snare, the breaks with the streets. Mm. Do you mm. know what I'm saying? Mm. Street kids mm. loved the breaks. Mm. Mm. So when we incorporated breaks and started mixing techno with breaks, that's mm. what we were trying to do. Mm. We were trying to get that hip hop breaks because there's something about breaks. It broke up the groove. Mm. It wasn't this constant thing. Mm. It tracks move, because it's like a real drummer playing. Instead of that boom, boom, which is disco. Yeah. It's the four to the floor, monotony. And where the breaks was kind of like... You invented that shit. Yeah. You, dude, you put the breaks in with the house. Yeah. And, you were, and you're like, yeah, it sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds good. <laughs> and what happened with Rage, we went from Rage yeah. being this paragon of, of house music, which was meant to be England's version of... Um, Paradise Garage and all of those clubs mm, yes. in America. Yes, that's right. It was meant to be so. It was, it was hardcore mm -hmm. snobbery going mm -hmm. on there. So when we went upstairs and we started mixing break beats with house, a lot of the real houses was like, "What? What, what is? What are they fucking doing?" Mm -hmm. Like a bit of a divide, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, it, no, but it did divisive. because they, they were kind of like, "We don't really like this. What they're doing with house?" Because they were purists. Mm -hmm. that, and I always remember a guy. I'm not going to mention his name, but DJ came to me one night and he went, we was playing at this quite snobby place and we went in there. It was like vocal house. And we went in there and started playing some hardcore in there, brother. We didn't give a fuck. Because you know, when you're younger, you don't care about them things. It's going back to the punk thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Rip so the rule, but... we just thought we'd shake it up. <laughs> and some people were in it, some people weren't. And then one of the house guys came to me and went, why don't you play vocals? Like vocals is the essence of house. Mm. And, and we were like, no, it ain't. The rhythm's the essence. Mm. The rhythm yeah, is yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And bro, and that's going back to back in the day when yeah. when slaves used to lick drums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. where it was. It's the rhythm. Yeah. You know what I mean? They weren't. Yeah. It weren't the singing parts. It was the drums that was yeah. getting everyone. Yeah, yeah. So the drums was a massive part mm. of hip hop mm. and drum and bass, and people got to understand that that kind of mixture of hip hop, how important mm. breaks were mm. from going back to rear groove to then hip hop using mm. James Brown was, I think at one stage, 90% of the breaks they were using were James Brown breaks. The hot that. stuff, yeah. um, um, uh, hot pants, sorry. The hot pants break, uh, funky drummer, yeah. uh, you know, the, uh, and, and of course the Amen break, yeah. which is the Amen brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which... It's the greatest break they, of all time. They, they, it's just the soul of, of our popular culture. Yeah, it really stop. is. It really is. The aim and break is... That's it. It's another level, bruv. That's and it. so all of these things made Jungle what it was and made now drum and bass what it was. It's just fast, a fast version. Where hip-hop was always 90 BPM, so, it's, you know what I mean, around that level. And um, But I've always... Followed hip hop and I love mm. hip hop. And you know, 50 years of hip hop this year. Yeah. Um, I'm feel blessed that I was there from the yeah. start. And you I've were seen there from it. The start. I, I knew I was going to, this, this smile that I, <laughs> I kind of warned him. I was like, yeah, this is, you know, this is a flowers day for you, my friend. I, I, my, my, that's this smile has not left me since you walked in the fucking room, bro. Like, nice. like you. You, this is real, this is the real deal. The fact that you, you said, Candidly, at the start of the, the the podcast, you weren't sure sometimes. Well, but but that's what that's what Mavericks have to face. They mm. deal with gladiatorial shit. Where sometimes <laughs> you're not, you know, you're about to walk into the octagon, and you know, I don't know yeah. about this one. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be a bit of a. Yeah. That's you. Yeah, that's, but that's that was you, bro. That's, <laughs> that, that, it still is though. <laughs> yeah, it hey, still is because oh, surprise me. You know, every gig you do, mm. you never know. You're stepping into the unknown. Mm. Every single time. And that's what keeps me going. Because you've got to remember, I'm not a man who's sitting down there planning his set. Mm. I'm literally doing it ad lib. Yeah. Killer. You're moving with so it. So literally, people don't realise this. Now, DJing has become, you know what you're going to do. Mm. Because it's become a show. Yeah. So you have to know what you're doing. So everything's very regimented now. Mm. The DJs know exactly what time this is going to drop. 
Mm. And, and you know, I'm going to move from this track to that track and I'm going to practice it because I've got cue points mm. and I know every... So they do that so they can dance around and become a showman. Yeah. We never learned like that. We learned you don't know what you're going to play next. Yeah. And you're literally mixing and matching, which is, that's the only way I can do mm -hmm. it. And I still do it like that now. So I'm... I'm DJing with kids that have got their sets planned mm. and they know and they mm. go in there and they probably know they're going to smash it because mm. they know, right, after 10 minutes, I'm going to play that track and that track to mash up the dance. And I'm, I don't do it like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, no. But that's that, yeah, you're working to the crowd. I've got to read the room. And in terms of personalities, well, yeah, you guys, like, with, you know, the shadow of you, the silhouette of you guys <laughs> being on stage was enough. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's only yeah. a few people. I'm going to put Goldie in, in yeah. there as well. Um, Book them. Book them. Oh, yeah, Book them. Book them, oh, Randall, Mickey. Kill it off. Those guys, man. Yeah. Those guys. So are this just... is the sign of a, it's, it's, it's the okay sign. It's yeah. a sign of quality and, yeah. and standards, like this authority. Figures that and you know another thing yeah. about that, and, and I, I think this is the lost art of it. I could walk into a dance, right, and within two minutes, I can tell you who's playing. Yeah. I, that's Randall. Yeah. That's Bookham. Yeah. That's Mickey Finn. That's Brian G. That's, that's Brian G. That's Frosty. Ron. Big up that's Ron. Ron. Oh. That's that's Ronnie Size. Yeah. Because everyone had this mm. personality yeah. and this this way of doing things that was so unique to them. Flow. And now. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you who's doing it. It could be one of 30 DJs mixing like that and DJing like mm. that. And that's where the art's gone a little bit. But does that not put you and the, and the aforementioned in a, in a, in a in prime position, really? It's, it's kind of... No, because no? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because it, I know what you're saying because it makes you a little bit more unique. But at the same time, the kids are, this is the way that, you've got to remember, this is what they've grown up on now. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And that's uh, the thing, Killer, uh, where you have to be really careful of the transitions because now you're getting a whole new bunch of kids and it's one of the first generations that ain't been, they ain't grown up on me and Groove. They've grown up now on Andy, C, and then now Boo, and headaches. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I get so what you're saying. That, that's, what they, that's what they know. So this yeah. is the first generation that made you go to places and people are like, oh, Fabian Groove Rider. Like, what did they do then? <laughs> and, but that's cool because I wouldn't have it no other way. It's like, if you don't know what we're doing, Google us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what we did in the rear groove days. I weren't around in the 60s and 70s, but what we did, we, for me, back in the day, you had to go back to go forward. So you had to go back and see what was, what got us to this moment. And what got us to this moment was, was funk. And, mm. and so that's the rear group phenomena. We missed out, but we thought, wow, this music. And I remember speaking to older guys and thinking, and saying to them, I wish I grew up in your era. We all say that. We all say that, innit? We all say that. I wish I grew up yeah, yeah. when. It looks so much more, f I mean, you know, no laugh. <laughs> yeah, but, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's true. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask something that I wasn't planning on asking. It could be seen quite triggery, and we can probably edit this if it, if it is too, too yeah. triggery. Um, right. Uh, real talk. So the appropriation of drum and bass has clearly... I, I see it, obviously. Yeah. There's an appropriation. It's almost like two worlds. Yeah. Um, I asked Scratcher about this, big up Scratcher, and he, he came back with a, a pretty solid answer, but I'm talking to the governor. Mm. It's a liaison that's awkward. Okay. Because I'll tell you why, right? So now you're getting these massive drum and bass parties. Uh -huh. So drum and bass, they, they have their own festivals now. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Then there's loads of them. It's there. incredible. And they all sell out. Yeah. They all sell out real quick as yeah. well, right? Yeah. So then you get on the big on the big stage, you're getting the new kids on the block. Uh -huh. And they're all out there. And you know what? Respect to them. They're all doing their thing. Because we're fans of the music. We all yeah, 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 music. of course. And, and, and it's got to move on. Yeah, and there's got to be a time yeah. where you've got to not hand over the mantle, but mm. you've got to share the mantle yeah. a little bit. You've yeah, got to yeah. share the love. Yeah, yeah. Because there was a time, I remember, with drum and bass, where everyone was going, 
Yeah, but when is it? When's when this? When's when is there going to be a new lot of DJs coming in? Mm-hmm. It's still the old guard mm, that yeah. are yeah. headlining everything, yeah. and and they have been headlining for fifteen years. That has to get the game has to come up. Sometime, yeah, it has to. It? Mm. It, and you know what? And it's and it's it's a bit like hip hop, mm-hmm. where I sit down and listen to hip hop now, mm, yeah. and I think, what is this? What is going on? Like yeah, it's moving. Yeah. But it's moving. Mm. It's moving, and unless you are there every step of the way and you go through all the transitions, you're not really going to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're going to sit back and clamour for the old days. Yeah. And you all, and I hate this killer yeah. when people go, it was better. It wasn't. No, no, it was no, different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was different. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because those yeah. kids are f- probably feeling it in a very similar way to when we heard KRS-One the first time. That's right. They're looking at little Yachi and the yeah. man and sitting there and thinking, these guys are fucking these are geniuses. It. Yeah, these are it. It's, it's, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I never sit down and act like it was better back in the day. I never do that. Yeah, it's just different. It's, it's just different. different. Yeah. So now uh, it's kind of like there's a little bit of we're legacy DJs now. Yeah. And I don't really like that so much because I don't like that that feeling of they're doing it because kind of you should be grateful to them for a, in, a, in a funny sort of way. Mm-hmm. Not grateful, no, but you know what I'm from. saying? It's kind of like, well, you're playing here, ain't you? Mm. So what are you complaining about? Mm. It's because, no, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying legacy is making me sound like like I'm, I'm close to the wheelchair, bruv. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? It's, it's, it's hard it's, there's, to... Yeah. Look, okay. the word legacy can mean so many things. And legacy is something that we should be proud of. And legacy is probably now we have to live off our legacy. So to a degree, you've got to... Because if you want to play in the swim with the big sharks now, mm. you have to now have something to offer. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? You've got to have something to offer now. Yeah, yeah. Because now we're into the era of influencers. Yes, that's it. Influencer DJs, yeah. bruv. That's, that's Whereas their persona and, and what they show on the gram and TikTok is actually more important than what they actually do. Mm, mm. Because having the followers looking good, do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Living lavish, mm. playing to 10,000 people. Mm. That's what gets you bookings. That's getting your bookings. Yeah, bookings, yeah. It's getting your bookings because promoters are looking at it and thinking, he can sell out my dance. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of get the influencer kind of aspect, yeah. but being good is way down the ladder now. Do you think a lot of that is, um, and uh, yes, wholeheartedly. Yeah. Um, and I know that that fence we're talking on at the moment, mm. we can look from both sides because we've been the youngsters yeah. and we are now, the now. And the we're looking, statesman. Yeah, but we can see the elders yeah. before us. Okay. Yeah. So um, it's playing to the algorithm, it's playing to the, the, the platform and the social media. And it just goes back to what we were kind of saying before. It's like the foundations, the, the you know, I, do, I get it with graffiti, I go out and paint, you know, but I'm not about to go and do things. I'm not going to Google that shit. Yeah. I want to go and speak and be around the presence of kings that are doing yeah, it. Because yeah, if yeah. I'm not learning, it's like it's like jumping in a car and having learned it on a Google. You know, it's like, yeah. well, well it's how do you know if the, thing. Yeah, how's it, uh, what are you going to do if there's an accident? Yeah. What are you going to do if, how do you react to, it's like you've got to have the, you've got to have the uh, foundations. Yeah, yeah. Same shit. Absolutely. Yeah. And another another problem. So what you're getting now since the pandemic, there's you know, the pandemic has spawned a lot of people that you know what I've got to say, and I've got to respect them. They got off their asses mm-hmm. and they learnt shit mm. in the pandemic and thought, and they've blown up. Yeah, they killed and it, they're yeah. and they're killing it. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? If through adversity, they've created. They, they, they yeah, created and through the adversity, yeah. and I've got. Do you know what? Everyone that yeah. done that, I yeah. give them props. Yeah, hundred percent. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, absolutely. But the problem is now. You're getting kids that are coming through sitting there thinking, oh, right, yeah, I can do this in a year, you know. Mm. This could take six months for me. Yeah. If I get out there now, I can blow up. And, yeah. it, and, and you know what? The, to navigate your way through is still exactly the same because that influencer that's killing it is one in a thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it doesn't seem like that. No. It seems like, oh, all of these... Lots. Yeah, a cascade of... And, and it isn't, and it isn't no, because they, yeah. you don't know about the others that tried it in... Huh. Po- 
post pandemic. I mean, Hedek's been there for young. Oh, he's been he's, he's been Harry there for a minute. Harry was telling me mad stories like have he been there for a minute, a long time. But, been, he, but so they've been through it. the process. Yeah, yeah, totally. But now you're getting guys that sit down thinking I don't need to go through that yeah, no more because he's Cause done can, it that way. So I'm going to do done it that way. I can be an influence. I can just go online and just get my numbers up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can get my numbers up, and before I know it, I can be doing headlining festivals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But bro, it don't happen like that because ninety nine percent of the time you're going to have to go through DJing to four people. Mm on a terrible sound system yeah. in some tiny little club. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's good. There's no mistakes in that. It's that's tough. exactly what that's needs to happen. That's how you learn your thing. <laughs> that is how you learn the game. Yeah. Because it gets you ready for everything. Yeah. When the decks fuck up, yeah. you've got to learn yeah. how to keep yourself composed. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you can't hear the monitors, yeah. all of those things. Yeah. It's all right doing it with four people there, but when you've got to do that and 5,000, 10,000 people, because you've been thrown into that arena yeah. and all of a sudden, shit, the monitors ain't working right. Yeah. I can't really do my thing properly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Then you're in trouble. Or lost in translation. You've travelled so far over to another part of the world to, and you realise, ah, oh, not only is that fucked up, the aforementioned, yeah, yeah. but fuck, how am I going to explain this to, to anybody? Yeah, here? yeah, right. Because <laughs> the crowd, the crowd look at you and think it's you. Yeah. yeah they don't they sit down. Always and, they always do yeah. that. They don't look at you and think... If the music cuts out, they start throwing shit at you. Yeah. Because they think you've deliberately kind of destroyed right? their night. Yeah. They're not sitting there thinking, oh, well, the sound man's fucked up. Yeah, or it's deeper than that, but they don't, it's all They surface. don't, because it's yeah. kind of like, yeah. I get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because they paid. They, they paid, paid their money. And we want to supply and do the best we can. Uh, absolutely. Right? But sometimes things are out of your kind of like, mm. and there's nothing you can do about it, and you've got to keep yourself composed. And you know that, Keller. Mm. I'm sure you've been to enough places and... It's a tough crowd. Yeah, it's a tough crowd. You know, when you get that tough crowd and you're like, oh, shit. And the tough. worst one is by far traveling. So, like Australia, I remember getting Australia and you're playing to like eight people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've come in 23 hours, mate. This is on a train, right? Right. And yeah. you're a million miles from home. Yeah. And you've got to go back to that hotel and yeah. live yourself after. Yeah, oh, that feeling. Bruv, it's hard. And those moments, that, that, that's what makes you, bruv. You mm. know what I mean? All those little moments and you learn. If you've got it in you, mm. you learn to navigate through it. Don't get me wrong. Some people do fall at that hurdle. Yeah. Totally. And they've always have. We've seen so many guys, Killer, oh, yeah, these mans are going to come and mash it up. It's either they haven't had the right attitude or they haven't really had it mm. in them to go through the sticky moments mm. and they just fade away. And it's the strong survive, and it's true. Mm -hmm. That's that's a very true saying. You and uh, you and you and Groove, the, the, the dynamic duo, the, the unstoppable pair that... You know, dominated Radio One. Mm. The moment I tell you a moment. This is a moment when I thought, Kid. okay, this guy, is something, something else, and I've got different gravy, this guy, yeah. right? So we was at Rage, and um, I remember all the time at Rage. I'm not going to mention the DJ. We used to kind of get on it a little bit. Do you know what I'm saying? And um, <laughs> one night, and it wasn't for me, right? And one night I did, and I was. Absolutely fucked. And I couldn't even DJ. <laughs> and Groove's teetotal. He don't drink. He doesn't do anything like that. He doesn't oh. do anything. He's just... Yeah. You yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like your old man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go on. So... <laughs> oh, you I know I, I, old man. I, it's yeah, so yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. It is, and so... I, um, I couldn't even DJ. And I could tell that he wasn't happy. So anyway, he, he went, right, I'm going to give you a lift home. He gave me a lift home. Didn't say a word. Mm -hmm. Didn't say a word to me. Oh, and I was kind of going a bit like, praying, oh, like, oh, what is up with him, man? Yeah. So he dropped me off and he went, all right, he went, I'll see you tomorrow. I think we were doing, we had a gig the next day. Yeah. This was 1990, 91, yeah, very yeah. earlier in their career. And I was getting up the car, he went, one minute. And I went, what's up? He went, bruv, I want to see you straight. If you're going to do that shit, you're going to have to go solo. Because I can't be carrying people. Yeah. I, don't, I don't do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, you know and it, I, there's nothing wrong with what you do, yeah. but if you're going to do it with me, ain't going to work, bruv. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need to think about what, if you're going to carry on doing that, bruv, it's Fabio and Groove Rider. Mm. And killer, I went in the house and I went up, it was like my dad cussing me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know when your parents tell you shit and it's the right thing to do, yeah. but you just didn't want to hear it. And I got upstairs and I thought, yeah. that was it. That was the last time I've ever taken anything. Wow. Because I respected what he said so yeah. much. Yeah. And I sat down and thought, he's right. And we have got something going here. Yeah. And I can't be, 
oh, I'm too mash up to play. That ain't gonna work, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 he literally just said, and he done it in a really calm way. It wasn't condescending. Mm. He didn't patronize me. He gave me an option. He gave me a choice. He didn't just say, right, I'm gone. He just said, look, I'm in it, but if you're gonna do it, yeah, clean your act up. Yeah. Because you ain't doing that. Else you? you're not doing it with me. Because I'm not I'm not having wow. you sitting around and 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 I'm take I, I I'm playing and you are too out of its place. Yeah. And, I can't, and honestly. No, I don't think there's been a moment in my life that has resonated more. And and I I sat down and thought, he's right. And I've never, ever touched a thing since that day. That's and, and, and that's because, you know what? And a lot of it was also because of respect. And, you know, Groove's got this ethic, this he's so hard working, he works so hard. Mm. And he loves it so mm, much, mm, killer. Mm, 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 I don't mm. think people understand <laughs> that guy. If you was to say to him now... Groove, I've got a few people around here. Um, what are you doing? Mm, mm, mm. Groove, he'd be here in a minute. God, and he, because he loves it. He yeah. loves DJing so much. More than anyone else that I know. I think it's just such a part of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, he, and, and, and the way he expresses himself, is it means so much to him. Yeah, yeah, that's That's amazing. why in the pandemic, yeah, he, did. he was... Broken. It was, he, he, my guy was like, because because of DJing, it's yeah. everything to him. Yeah. And um, that ethos has really carried me as well. Because I love it, but I haven't got the relentless, like he never, ever, 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 ever will not turn up, hmm. will let you down. Once he's given you his word, he's going to be there. It's true. Well, I'm a lot more scattered. People that know me, and you know that yourself. <laughs> I'm a lot hey, more here. scattered. He's here. Yeah, hey, I know. It's here. taken a while. You did ask me about four years ago. <laughs> but he's, once Groove will just say, no, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'll probably go, yeah, 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 all right then. Mm -hmm. And just go ghost. Do you know what I'm saying? So cool, cool Groove. <laughs> Make it happen. <laughs> Note to self, Kelsey. <laughs> but yeah, he's he's just... He's an amazing guy. Yeah. And, you know, he's he does it in a way that he's a... Uh, he never bigs himself up. Mm. Oh, he's so, under, he's, he's so humble himself. about yeah, what he like, is and what he does. Yeah. And he just sees himself as a normal guy yeah. out there DJing. Far from it. He's a, he's a danger to the sound. And I don't think he really... Re but do you know what? I think that's kind of both of us have it got... It is both of you. We've yeah. both got this thing where we're just... It's not imposter syndrome. It's not imposter syndrome <laughs> because there is some self-belief there. <laughs> but I could go through phases sometimes. I'm like, like even when I was coming up here, <laughs> right, <laughs> on the train, <laughs> I saw this guy looking at me and I, was, and, he, and I was thinking, what's my guy looking at? But not for one second did I think he knows who I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just sitting there and thinking, this guy, why is he looking at me? Yo, and he got off the train yeah, and he came over to me and he went, like that. And I went, he went, are you Fabio? <laughs> and I went, oh, right, yeah. And I was happy because I was thinking, why are you looking at me yeah, yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah. that what, what's about to happen here? What, yeah, yeah. What, what's going on here? Yeah. Whereas a lot of people would be like, oh, he knows who I am. You know what I mean? Dude, hold on, mate. Now, I've, you know, Shab has been in here. Uh, Harry's been in mm. here. Like, this is a regular... Like, and I always think to myself, well, they must, to, to, to even just take a trip up here, yeah. you must get recognised all the time. Yeah, we do. We do. We do. We do. And it's, and it's crazy that we do. And like... <laughs> I'm Especially like, when you and Charlotte, but big up Charlotte, by the way. Yeah, like, come on. You two on. walking down the road, this is like, you know. Well, so now she gets it now yeah. much more than I do. She gets it. I go places and they're like, uh, yeah, yeah, we're Charlotte. Yeah. Or give Charlotte my love. And I'm... You're charming. Like, all over, yeah, innit? <laughs> like, oh, come on, what about me? Big What's up Charlotte Devaney. She's been on the podcast. She knows what time it is. Yeah, she knows what time it is. <laughs> yeah. And she's, she's just, she's, you know, she's... Doing it from the 90s shaking yeah, days. Yeah, so yeah, she yeah. gets a lot of that as yeah, well. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Because she's oh. done that transition mm. through being doing her modeling and 90s shaking yeah, yeah. and, and now yeah. DJ. People don't know the lineage. She's got an amazing she energy. Does, she? And she's just relentless. And it's Love the it. kick up the ass that I need a lot of the time. Mm. Groove's got that as well. Groove's got, I'm a lot lazier than both of them. They're very motivated. And I'm, I've got a real Jamaican side to me where I just like to chill and kick back and they're not like that, neither of them. And it's the two people closest to me are kind of the opposite of me. You need that, don't and, you? And it works. Yeah. It's like Groove. Yeah. Groove, 
we have very similar morals, but if you see us out on road, while there's a lot of similarities, we're very, very different. <laughs> and that, I think if we were similar, it wouldn't work. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't work at all. It wouldn't work because we balance each other out. Your marriages have broken up. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. More, more than, longer than you guys have been... Oh, come on, man. That's Most incredible. marriages have. You guys have just been... I know men that's been married four times in the yeah. time that we've been doing be, yeah, our yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? And so I've got these two people in my life that I'm blessed that they're so motivated and so yeah. focused and got so much yeah. mad energy, bro. Because yeah. I haven't really got that. I've, I'm uh, not laid back. I just think I'm a lot more conservative about the way I feel about things. I'm a lot more kind of footloose than they are. Um, I'm, I don't really... We're a Charlotte with every single detail. Mm. Our attention to detail mm. is faultless. Is is insane. I noticed that. When we did the podcast, it was like every little thing. I mean, she it's... she will go through a day. Like I I will go and book a, an appointment at the doctor's, yeah. and I'll tell her like it's a big thing. Yeah, you know, I, <laughs> and that she she will tell them reel off thirty things that she's done. Yeah. Including oh, five times at the, the hospital. Da, 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 oh, I've done this and that. Yeah. I've yeah, made yeah. a tune. Yeah. I've sorted my own things out. Oh, I've got my mum, uh, you know, a, a doctor's appointment at a, a, a clinic to sort her knee out. Oh, I've, I've, I've paid you. I've done this and that. Oh, I've sorted this out. <laughs> I've, I've, oh, right, repost this and that because I've got... Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. what yeah, the yeah. fuck? It's a weapon. An it's absolute just... absolute weapon. Ab she's an absolute savage. Yeah. When it comes to energy and 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 being focused and being on top of things, yeah, yeah. being on every little thing. The other day, she <laughs> so Instagram got this thing called broadcast now. Yeah, I see this. Yeah, right, which is nonsense, really. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's, just it's cool, thing. but it's it's another thing to do. Yeah. So I said to Charlotte, "Have you have you, have you seen Instagram broadcast? Um, this new broadcast thing she's got." She went, "No." Literally within two minutes, she'd set a page up for me. And she's, she went, you've already got 110 followers. Within five minutes of her even just knowing it's existing, she'd set up a page and she'd already got the thing live, bruv. Wow. And it was already going. And I'm like, how did you do, what, what, how did you? Yeah. And she was just like, oh, just, I just knew what to do. I was like, no, no, that's, what? that's. Whereas normal. me. I'd have to Google. I'd have to Google how to do it, how to do everything. I've got to Google. That's some Rain Man shit right there. It's like to, to just do things like that, like that, off the top of it, and and just know instinct, instinctively. Yeah, she just knows this has got to work like that. And and do you know what, Killer? A lot of people nowadays have that. Yeah, they do. Yeah, like right. they have that thing where they just know. Born I just tell. It. I tell when I when I was younger and I had a teddy. When we first had a teddy. I, it took me about two years to figure out there weren't someone in the back of the teddy because <laughs> I was kind of like, how's yeah. this working? I remember that as a kid. All right? Dude. And I, do you know when I knew shit had changed? <laughs> Once, I remember I was with my youngest. And I think Groove or someone video called me from Australia. And I said, I was like, raw video call from Australia. How are they doing this? Yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. And I got off the phone and she went, Dad, what is he doing? I was like, I was that's mad. I was just on a video call, you know, like yeah, yeah, he's yeah, in Australia, yeah. it's 8,000 miles away, blah, blah. She was just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, just, what, what, what's, yeah. what's the big deal? Yeah, like, yeah. You know? yeah. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. You, they don't know how good they got it. They don't know how good they got it, Particularly bro. Particularly on tour. God, can, I mean, some, you, you guys. Back in the day, you know, once you go on tour, you ain't hearing nothing. Yeah. It's not a peep but from you for... They're dead for, for, for weeks. That's it. Can't make no phone calls because phone calls is like £100 a minute. Yeah, yeah. Remember them days? <laughs> Couldn't yeah. make no calls. No. I remember once I went to Miami, come back, Vodafone gave me a bill for two grand. Yeah, they, can we have your wages? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, <basically, laughs> wages on phone calls. Basically, yeah. one call was like Been two, there. three pounds a minute. Remember those days? I remember those days. And then all of a sudden, man was talking about free calls and... You can make calls on WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and what's that other thing? Zoom as well. No, not Zoom, before Zoom, beginning with S. Oh, there was another medium just around the same time. Skype. As, Skype. 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 Right? For the, Skype. Like Skype, if you know, you know. Right, Skype. Remember Skype? Yeah. When that first came out. It was a game was changer. Going, what, you can make free calls from America? Yeah. Free. Like, free, you know, bruv. <laughs> Instead of paying... Two grand, you can make free calls. But that's what I'm saying. Shit happens, yeah. and it happens overnight with technology. Yeah, it's getting more like that, isn't it? Which we love because we wouldn't be here doing yeah, this. Yeah, no, absolutely. 
Absolutely, you just got to embrace it. You've, You've got, got to embrace, embrace it. it. Yeah. You can't sit down and be an old man and sit down and go, oh, things were better. No, it weren't. No. It's just different. But but then we do have these these transcendent moments of, wow, the, the reverse engineering of a royal orchestra. You know what I mean? Mm. Playing alongside you. It, yeah. That's that technological forefront going back True. to this. That's beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Lost... If it weren't for technology, we wouldn't be able wouldn't to do, do that. that. We wouldn't be able to do it, bruv. And I remember back in the day, I remember when drum and bass first started, people used to say, you wouldn't be able to get a drummer to keep in time with the, them beats for so long. It's going up 170 BPM and now they can do it. Yeah, big up Jungle Drummer, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Chris. Chris. Yeah. Bruv. <laughs> when oh. I, he's the first person I've heard drum. Yeah, me too. When people say it weren't possible to yeah, do it. Chris Jumble, Jungle and Drummer. And Chris yeah. was like the moment I saw you first. Mm. I saw Chris, I can't remember. Mm. It was in quite empty club. And they said, right, coming on now, Chris Jungle Drummer. Mm. And bruv, I said, and I was like, this is, a, this is a madness what this guy's doing. Mm. He's possessed. Yeah, he's possessed. It's like he was possessed. It. Even to this day, don't know. So, you know, so, you know, technology is a double-edged sword. You know, there's, there's, there's good things about it and there's bad things. It's mm. like everything, killer. You know? Yeah, it's, it's like everything. Like everything. Everything. So you got the new, uh, got a new compilation? Yeah, got a new compilation coming out called Generation Liquid. Wicked. Which is uh, kind of like a... Uh, a little kind of retrospect on the liquid days, maybe the golden days of liquid. Love it. In 2004, 2005, 2006, where uh, liquid was just new. Mm. It was new. You know, when things are new and shiny, it yeah, feels yeah. different. And it yeah, feels yeah. like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it, this was a time where it was just like every week I was getting like 20, 30 tunes that were just classic, ended up being classics. Do you know what I'm saying? And they were all on this compilation? Do you know what? We've got as many as we can. Because nice. when you do a compilation, it's always, you're always going to get a couple of tunes that you think, I wish I got that on mm -hmm. there, that people just don't want to let off. And I get it. Some of them are too personal to people. And they're like, look, you know, I don't want it on a compilation. Mm -hmm. And I get that. Mm -hmm. Or it'll be like, or oh, we're, we're going to do a compilation in a couple of years of our... You know, and we want it to be an exclusive. And yeah. I get that. So there was about... That happens too. Yeah. Happens. There was about six tunes that I thought, gosh, oh, shit, man. Got but yeah. then I don't want to act like we've got a secondary album here because every tune I was looking and listening to it the other day, everything works. <laughs> everything everything lands, man. And, and I'm really happy with that because I've done compilations before. Mm when I couldn't get what I want and it sounded a bit patchwork. Yeah. It sounds a bit like yeah. that tune doesn't really go, but we couldn't get no other tune. So we've got that fine tune. Of yeah, the DJ, yeah. yeah. So we've thrown it in and it doesn't quite work yeah. and it throws it and, and there's not one tune that does that on this. Of course, Everything good. just is just perfectly aligned. So yeah, I'm really happy with that, man. And when can we get it? Is it out now? It's out now. If yeah, it's out it now. In. It's out Generation Liquid. Get it now, it's out now, and... Uh, Even if it wasn't out now, we'd have said it was out now because it's going to come out when you see this. So yeah, it's exactly. Now. It's out now. Well, volume one's out now, and then we've got volume two volume coming soon. Volume two as well. Yeah, and then we've got the Seriously. orchestra thing popping off as well. Of course. Whoa. Yeah, man, the orchestra's uh, absolute insane. I mean, it's 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 really energised us. Because yeah. it's something out of our comfort zone, yeah. and it's something away from DJing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's so You know blessed. what I'm saying, it's Killer? Lovely. Like, you've got your... You know, you know, you've got so many different things that you do, and yeah. you know, you got, you love that, yeah, because you don't ever get bored. Variety, yeah, that's it. You don't it. ever get bored. That's you it. know, if you don't want to do this, you can sit down. Oh, I, I, I want to spray today, yeah, but I don't always want to do that. Yeah. But I want, today, I'm on that vibe. I can go and do my thing now, yeah. my other thing, yeah, freedom, and, yeah. and that freedom where you don't feel like. So, and that orchestra's done it. It's made us. Get out of a conference. The first time we done the orchestra, mate, I was nervous, bro. Really, trust really, me. Really. I remember walking out and thinking, looking up at the crowd and thinking, oh. What have we got ourselves? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, like anything like that, 20 seconds in. Yeah, yeah. You're just fine. It's the anticipation, isn't it? Must be some like mad PTSD coming off the back of an event like that. Bruv. You must have just sat there after thinking. Bruv. The yeah. first time, especially when you do something and you're not quite sure how it's going to go and yeah. it smashes it. Yeah. And yeah. that feeling, bro, like... Yes, yeah, that's a knowledge, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that moment for you, where yeah. you must have been. Yeah. I remember Same you thing. being like, because this yeah. is drum and bass, and drum, you know what drum and bass people yeah. are like. Yeah. I, don't even, I, don't, I never even got a smile across a counter <laughs> in a record yeah. shop, yeah. let alone jumping on stage in front of everyone. Do you know what and I, mean? I remember afterwards, literally, you got mobbed. Yeah, it was fucking incredible. Like Ronnie Size, yeah. Goldie, everyone was yeah. coming up to you going, yeah. 
that blew my mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'll never forget that. It was one of those moments that I'm kind of like, I remember sitting there thinking, I didn't even know what to say. <laughs> I was just like, people were just like, you just got... But if I remember what you were wearing. You were wearing an all red tracksuit. Yes, I was, yeah. yeah. I remember it all. Yeah, it was a just... blur one. Yeah. <laughs> Those were the With days, innit? Yeah, yeah, come yeah. On, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just incredible. <laughs> That's mad you remember that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> And this is another one, not to forget, for, brother, honestly, I mean, your legacy is, and I say legacy, future forward legacy, mm. because we can't go forward without recognising and looking back. Mm. Your, your pedigree, your, your whole, that, it's history made. Mm. To go through everything is impossible, but yeah. I really, really value our time and having a good No, track. absolutely. And I, I, um, I'm big up to the pod. Because I remember you did your first one. I remember <laughs> you just said you were going to do a podcast. And then I was thinking, what's a podcast again? Like, what is that? I didn't even know what the medium was, really. Because mm -hmm. not that many people, especially street people, weren't doing it. No. I tell you that from now. No, no one from the road was doing that. Not even. And when you started doing it, mm. and I think I was going to be like one of your first 10 yeah, yeah, guests. Easily the first, like, in the if, first 10. It was yeah. in the first 10. Yeah. Because I remember you said, Fab, I want you on. And I'm yeah. like, Podcast, what the fuck is that? We'll have to dig out the message somewhere. Yeah, you, yeah was, honestly, was, I remember you, you did. Yeah. And now you've reached mm. this incredible landmark of 500. Yeah. Which is great because, you know, uh, it's like you've got everything on there and you've got friends mm. and, and, and people that do the graph with you. Mm. And, 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 and it's really, you never just stick to one thing. No, it's, it's always a real surprise. And I think that's what people that have bought into your podcast. Yeah. Love about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can always learn something new. Because there's, I'm sure there's many people that'll be like, well, oh, I didn't know Fabio did that or... Totally. You know what I'm saying? The demographic of people that watch this, this is, this is their, a lot of people, it's their introduction to you. But it's is, great because, it's you know, like interviews tend to be like, uh, someone's done the research. Mm. But it's, Script, it, script it doesn't script. feel right. You know what I mean? And it feels like they don't know what they're talking about. Mm. And I hate doing that shit. Mm, do you know what I'm saying? Mm. And even if they've done good research, it still feels like... By numbers kind of thing. By numbers, mm. I'm being interviewed. And mm. I always like it when it's kind of like, mm. you're just hanging. Yeah, just hanging. Do you know what I mean? This and you're no just doing your to, thing. It's no different to what would normally happen. There's nothing you know been I mean? scripted at all. I had no <laughs> idea what you was going to ask me. And you've just can't come out. And I know that you haven't scripted anything. No. You had a general idea. No, no. I, I, I just... I, I got sent a bio and I was like, I'm not, I can't even get yeah. into that Pandora box yeah, yeah, right no, now. Yeah, no, 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 because that's long. <laughs> it's amazing. Because uh, you find yourself going down roads that you, and it's just kind of like, yeah. you bore yourself. Yeah, but we know. Yeah, you, come on, thing. you know the thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's been blessed, bruv. Thank you so much, my Yes, brother. killer. My fucking guy. <laughs> Do I mean? Round the house, Fabio. What would you want? What would you want? Killer, killer <laughs> podcast out like that. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember, sharing is caring. Spread the word. Tell a friend, tell a, tell a friend. Uh, crime don't pay, but neither do they. Uh, you stay lucky people don't talk to anyone, I wouldn't. Nice off, Fabs. Face! Wow. Nailed it, brother.